Hey YouTube, what's up? Uh, this is Faith Works, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I just wanted to talk to you or give you 10 tips of caring for your micro locks. And these are tips that I've just been discovering as I've been moving along my lock journey. I got my locks, these are my very first set. Um, of micro locks back in July of 2021 and so these are just a few tips that I've picked up along the way um, if these if you find these tips beneficial or helpful then like this video comment and subscribe and uh, let me know if you have had any shared experiences um, with these tips or if you think I need to change something leave that in the comment as well okay so tip number one when handling your hair make sure your cuticles are maintained um, to prevent snagging when we're handling these locks um, we need to make sure that we're taking care of our nails as well whether you have your natural nail or you're getting extensions done. You know, the same thing applies. Make sure you're getting your nails routinely taken care of. Um, if you take care of your own nails, then make sure you file them down. If you have any snags or any cracks in your cuticles, you know, give yourself a little at-home treatment. Give yourself some self-care and just take care of that. And it's just gonna prevent breakage as you're touching your hair, as you're handling your hair, you really want to treat it as best as you possibly can. Tip number two, and this is very similar to tip number one, but it is make sure when you're handling your hair that your hands are moisturized. Um, you can use a light oil I like to use. Um, and what I mean by this is mainly when you're about to like braid and band your hair or you're putting it into a style, you wanna make sure your hands are not dry because when they are dry, they're also stealing that moisture from your hair and you know, you have less of a barrier um, between your hair and your hands and that friction is causing breakage. So just keep your hands moisturized, you know, you wash your hands often, you know, we're always cleaning and, cooking and doing this and that so we just want to keep our hands moisturized tip number three try washing your hair in the mornings or before you go to work um, I used to wash my hair at nighttime right before bed and what I noticed is number one like if you braid and band and you let your hair dry overnight that moisture is really staying like if you wear a bonnet or a scarf it's staying in to your scalp and you know that increased moisture left on your scalp for long periods of time can lead to a more sensitive scalp especially when you go to wash your hair next time if you notice your scalp is more tender than usual it's probably because you have had too much moisture in your hair for a long period of time. Sorry if you hear my son in the background, he's, yeah. <laughs> when you wash your hair in the mornings and you go on about your day, you go to work, you know, you're giving yourself, you're giving your hair and your scalp that time to breathe, that time to dry. Um, and you know, this style is supposed to be very easy, um, you know, not so difficult, so, you know, once I've finished washing my hair in the mornings, honestly, I don't even leave the braids in from braiding and banding. I literally just take the braids out and let my hair go and let it air dry. And, um, you know, that's fine with me anyway. Um, later on, if I want to stretch my hair with a style, then I'll do that, you know, the next day. Number four, um, when you are braiding and banding um, or just handling your hair in general, um, try to separate your hair into specific sections so what I mean by that is separate your crown you know the hair in your crown area separate the hair 
from the nape, your temples, um, this part of your hair and this part of your hair. Keep those sections together. Um, you know, don't have this piece of hair braided with this hair in the back just because you don't want to have unnecessary breakage at certain parts of your locks um, because you know like if I have this section braided somehow with this section in the back I have a lot of tension right here and in the back as well so that's just gonna cause a lot of issues try to keep your styles light you know nothing too tight um, and then yeah just keep your sections separated also I'm gonna throw in this tip here I didn't write this tip down but I'm just gonna give it as a freebie um, don't sleep in your styles like your braided styles or your um, twisted styles or if you're doing a roller set try your best not to sleep on those um, you know again just with the pulling too tight of your locks you're gonna have breakage you're gonna have issues especially when your hair dries out you're gonna have some issues so try your best to not sleep in styles if you can do it in the morning or use a blow dryer sometimes I like to use a blow dryer for my styles if I don't want to leave it in overnight Number five when braiding and banding Try not to make your braids too small or too tight at the roots, especially if you have just retightened your locks. So first part of number five, don't make your braids too small. Now the crimped look is really cute, I won't lie, but it can be so difficult to get those tiny braids out. And so when you're like meticulously trying to unbraid the braid, because it's already dry anyway, you've left it in overnight possibly, you let it dry, and it's gonna be not fun to get out. Um, you might have a lot of tangling or issues, especially towards the bottom of your locks. Try not to braid your braids too tightly at the roots when you're about to shampoo your hair um you really have to give yourself that space to be able to get to your roots and scrub the way you need to scrub um you know if everything is too tight and then you're trying to go in there you're gonna have breakage at the roots you're gonna have issues or you're just not gonna be able to get your hair as clean as you would like to so I know we don't want to have any issues with unraveling um, and it really kind of just depends on the length of your hair as well you know how far you're able to braid down but if you can if your hair is longer try to leave two or three inches of your roots you know unbraided and then lightly braid down slowly getting tighter as you get down to the ends but try to keep your braids larger in size and not as tight tip number six shampoo gently um, so what I mean by this is don't be don't be all over the place this is it's an it's a cool style you can be free with it but you don't want to mess up the integrity of your locks by you know scratching with your nails and then just like scratching in all these different directions you know just go section by section if you sectioned off your hair in your specific parts do it one section at a time and you can get in there and scrub like don't be afraid to use your fingers don't be afraid to use your fingernails that's what God has given them to us for especially when we got that itch like it just feels so good to scratch sometimes so yeah, don't be afraid to use your nails to lift up those dirt and, that, and those flakes. Um, but just, you know, don't be wild about it. Tip number seven, keep your scalp clean. This is a must. So I know with locks, we want to try to avoid washing our hair too much. At least that might be a rule with sister locks. But I really feel 
this is a case by case basis if you if you're a person that can go a month without washing your hair and be fine that's cool um, but for me and my scalp that's not gonna work and so you really want to be replenishing that moisture to your scalp regularly you really want to lift up that dirt regularly as well to prevent thinning at the root you know if when something grows in healthy it doesn't have you know breakage and little weird things going on with the hairs um, so if you see thinning at the root um, it could be because your hair is dry your scalp is dry you're not getting all that dirt off of your scalp and so the hair might be growing in a little bit irregular um, so just regularly keeping your scalp clean could help promote you know healthy locks tip number eight when detangling your hair use the harp method rather than the raking method so I'm gonna show you what I mean by harp so if I take this section of hair I'm going to harp through my locks individually separating that way and I'm not raking I'm separating gently like I'm playing a harp I'm not raking through the hair and that's gonna cause more breakage so again harp method let me know if you like that or not tip number nine no tight scarves, no tight wigs, no headbands, no tight hair ties. So this is about protecting your edges. So if you don't have your locks yet, I would honestly recommend around your sensitive areas, just go ahead and make sure you tell your loctician to get them a bigger size than the rest of your locks around your head because these are just sensitive areas we're constantly laying down on our pillows you know we got our scarves it's still cold outside we got our scarves around you know the back of our neck and stuff so those areas experience a lot more friction and when we put things around them that are too tight that just continues to add to the friction we're experiencing and the breakage in those areas you know Honestly, try to avoid putting anything around your edges at all, honestly and truly. Just try to avoid it. Um, but if you must, like a scarf or something, let it be loose. Also, the tight hair ties, especially when braiding and banding, I recommend using um, just normal hair ties. I don't really recommend using rubber bands because as you're washing for some reason it feels like they just get tighter around the ends of your hair I don't know but you know having to like dig your nail into your hair to get those rubber bands out on the ends of your hair like the most the oldest part of your hair um, you can experience breakage on your ends so just use elastics they're a lot easier to come out um, in my opinion so you're not you know thinning out your hair on the ends as well. I'm gonna show you a picture of my edges of probably a few months ago. And you know, they were just, I didn't realize, I don't know what I was doing wrong. I think I was getting them retightened too tightly. And so, you know, I let my loctician know this and I just feel like I wasn't really being taken care of in that way. So, you know, I've been doing my retightenings myself at this point and just trying to regrow my edges and I'll just kind of show you what they look like like here it's growing in a lot more and I think that's just because you know I haven't been putting anything too tight around that area you know I'm regularly spraying that area with water and oil keeping it moisturized um, and you know I'm not pulling those back into like buds or things like that I'm really keeping keeping this area sectioned off on its own and letting it just be free tip number 10 when cleaning dusting um, sweeping laying down on the ground 
wear hair protection. So whether that be a bonnet or a scarf, you want to try to minimize dust and debris getting in your locks as much as possible. So when you're cleaning around the house, you know, dust and stuff just fills the air all the time. Even doing laundry sometimes. Like when I pull laundry out of the dryer, I'll see like little, you know, lint balls and they'll just be flying everywhere. So when you're doing laundry, try your, to wear a bonnet, you know. This is a tip for when you're drying your hair after you shampoo. For me, when I first dry my hair, I like to put my satin scarf around my head and then on top of my satin scarf, I'll put a normal towel. So the normal towel will soak up the excess moisture that my satin scarf doesn't really hold that well, to be honest. And I feel like my hair still, you know, dries the same amount. And I'm lessening the amount of contact that lint will have in my locks. And for a bonus tip, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> tip number 11 drink water regularly i know you hear this all the time i hear it all the time and we're just like yeah i mean is it really that important yes yes it is i know it doesn't seem like it is but it is our body needs water to function depending on what job you have it is recommended that you drink 16 to 32 ounces of water every hour now that's a lot of water I don't even drink that much water but that's that's totally a goal if you have it you know just drinking water helps keep everything regulated and running properly um, once your most vital organs are taken care of and you have enough water then you know that re the rest of that moisture goes to your hair and your skin and things like that so I'm so sorry, my son is just like, yeah. But anyway, and we're done. Thank you for tuning in. If you liked these tips, like and subscribe and let me know in the comments that you want to see more. And thank you for joining me. Bye.